The College of Arts and Sciences at the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga proudly celebrates and champions liberal education, an approach to teaching and learning that aims to liberate the mind from naivete and habit by emphasizing a broad and well-rounded course of study in the humanities, the fine arts, and the social, behavioral, and natural sciences. A liberal education prepares students to think critically and creatively, to communicate clearly, and to reflect on complexity, diversity, and change along our social, cultural, technological, and scientific horizons. I think the essential pursuits of college should be the acquisition of knowledge, finding out what you don't know, and finding out interesting things that also help you become part of a vibrant citizenry. A liberal education cultivates, uh, for an individual, strong intellectual as well as practical skills. For example, written and communication skills are central to our programs. Analytical skills, information literacy, and problem solving skills are a real hallmark of our graduates. Uh, what that means is our students are able to make sense of not only their own lives through art, literature, philosophy, sociology, anthropology, uh, the behavioral and social sciences as well as the natural sciences, uh, mathematics and statistics too. Um, they cultivate that sense of social responsibility in that they have to think about not only their own experiences but the lived experiences of others. The College of Arts and Sciences includes a wide and diverse array of programs of study here at UTC. In my mind, most gen ed programs give students um, the opportunity to experience different habits of mind. We um, allow students to have a philosophical habit of mind or a scientific habit of mind. And um, once you get into a particular discipline, you can't really do that anymore. Um, and I think we need all of those habits of mind to make you know, a good citizen, and you know, a lot of people want to talk about a good worker. What I get requests for is people who can be both philosophical and creative and scientific and be able to make graphs. And I think Gen Ed is the place, one of the last places that you get a chance to dabble in a lot of different fields before you have to choose. And we want the students, when they walk across the stage, they kind of have a toolbox with them to say, yes, I've had this experience. They can go to an employer and says, I've been able to go into a, uh, this type of internship. I'm able to do these type of things and work with these type of communities. So that gives them pretty much another kind of stamp to say, yeah, I've got that experience. And that's what the college is trying to do, get a student. They have that toolbox, that, that, that little bit of extra uh, oomph that uh, gives them that position to be able to converse. You know, the, the great value of undergraduate research is that it allows both the students and the faculty to take that learning outside of the classroom and really put some real world skills to it. So it really is sort of a preparation for life as opposed to a preparation for a specific discipline. They're using those skills that they learn in the classroom, in the real world. So whether it's doing analysis and then being able to read certain types of documents, what they're doing is they're be becoming part of a larger conversation. They're learning how to speak to different types of people, feel different types of questions that tend to be from people who are outside of the classroom, who are other than their professors. Your professors are doing research. They are engaged in academic scholarly activities that they probably need help with. And the best way to get involved in, in undergraduate research, I think, is to ask your professor if they need help. I think it's crucial to art pedagogy that um, our faculty are practicing artists, that they are engaged in that broader art world, participants in that. Students then see what it means to be a professional artist, not just uh, learning information, but um, uh, see models of, of vital, vibrant, even progressive practice. The students will be with us for three, four, or five years, and then they move out into the world. And we feel a responsibility to make sure that our students understand what that transition means and, uh, and what it means to engage professionally in the world as an artist. And the, 
You know, the ways that that happens here with artists, artist organizations, facilities, programs uh, that operate outside the institution and through that they're getting access to a lot of other voices, a lot of other ideas, and they're being challenged in ways that are different than the way that we challenge them in the university. Training musicians to perform is training them to understand music in the most internalized way. It is impossible to convey something that you don't have intrinsic knowledge of. So by training students to perform, we are training them to be, become better able to create and lead the musical experience for those around them and for themselves. We have seven departments that have graduate programs. This includes the Department of Political Science and Public Service with this Master of Public Administration program, Environmental Sciences, Criminal Justice, English, Music, Math, Psychology. These play a critical part in, in due to the fact of the work of the faculty um, and also from the work of some of our graduate students in terms of bringing visibility to the university, but also in development of careers, um, life after graduate school, in the development of the students. So there's a, you know, there's a whole array when we talk about research that, um, that is important to graduates and their, and their experience. For let's say master's students, um, traditional master's students, it kind of gives them a taste of what maybe you are interested in this particular topic. And you might want to move into this particular field. This kind of gives you a, like a taste of, and a little flavor of what you might be interested in doing so you can move on if you want to. Or it can help you to identify that you don't want to go into academia, but you might want to go into industry and you have the level, of, now have that level of expertise to go into industry. It's a special kind of person that can do that sort of thing. There are two or three different things you get from study abroad. I would say one of the most important things is linguistic competence, but from a more holistic viewpoint, I would say that just having a broader world view and seeing how people do things in different places getting to know people firsthand from a different culture is just very eye-opening for students. The college strives to retain students, increase graduation rates, and stay connected with our graduates. In these efforts, we emphasize strong advisement as we mentor our undergraduate and graduate students. Well, it's kind of like uh, getting on the train and trying to figure out, are you on board with me? And then all of a sudden, when you realize they're on board, that's the reward I'm getting uh, for the past couple of weeks. Sometimes things don't go the way you want it in higher education. Life happens. There are barriers that are gonna happen in life, but we all are gonna get through them because I'm gonna hold your hand a little bit and show you the path that I went through and you're going to come through this journey as well.